we meet again overcast day i thought i was hoping for a, a better uh, sunrise nothing today i was thinking to talk about uh, frame rates in video not in photo obviously in videography and uh, man that was something that is obsessed me lately but well since forever you see frame rates are something that you have to choose when you start uh, uh, doing a video it's, it's it's a setting that you cannot ignore same like iso aperture shutter speed you, you need those parameters and um, it's quite difficult to make a video about this topic simply because when you edit your video your timeline can only have one frame rate value what is actually a frame rate well we'll talk about everything uh, <laughs> while we are going and photograph here uh, in a house well a frame rate is nothing but uh, one photo that is taking in a bunch of 24 25 30 or whatever other frame rates you are setting in your camera now since the beginning of uh, cinematography it was always a question of how to trick the eye and how this can be efficient financially as well so people experimented with 16 24 48 60 frames per second ultimately they settled on 24 probably because of the financial reasons as well and secondly because it gives this dreamy airy fairy world that they are depicting in their movies as well so it's very easy to hide different uh, you know special effects with a low frame rate than when you are shooting in a very high frame rate when everything will be lifelike and much more obvious it took almost 30 years until television was invented and well the peak of it was somewhere in the 50s in the USA first now a television works differently compared to a projector obviously connected to electrical grid in USA electrical grid has a frequency of 60 Hertz so a frame rate of 30 FPS was, was chosen so each frame will be will have a 2 to 2 pull down and everything fits perfectly well that is until color television came into place and in order to accommodate the chroma signal uh, it was obviously too expensive to extend the broadcast signal so that was reduced to 29.9 which visually doesn't have any uh, doesn't offer any significant difference compared to 30p when Europe adopted television as well because their frequency uh, at the electrical grid was 50 Hertz obviously the frame rate was naturally 25 very simplistically there are two main uh, system we are talking about PAL and uh, NTSC PAL is for Europe NTSC is for uh, USA and parts of the Japan and um, yeah they they operate at, at different uh, frequencies and why is this important because I remember as a kid going to cinema man it's so beautiful like look at that there is a, even a small waterfall there it's very cinematic anyway uh, I remember as a kid going to cinema and obviously the movies were shot in 24 frames per second and when I was going home uh, TV was broadcast in 25 not much of a difference but if you think about of the USA what's happening is when they go back home and watch TV shows there was in 30 frames and then uh, and broadcast uh, news and other uh, competitions or whatever was broadcasting so those six extra frames were actually 25 percent more frames than uh, 24 so they, it looks different it looks much smoother it looks potentially uh, much different so i didn't realize that oh the waves are coming and i don't have my wellingtons uh, i did not realize that until i met internet <laughs> somewhere in 2005 or 2003 and obviously videos of internet were broadcast in 30 or were shown in 30p back then so then what I, I i was realizing that well actually there is a huge difference but i didn't know too much now when we are talking about broadcasting obviously we are talking about recording live events and sometimes this needs to be done in artificial light as well and if you do not have a certain shutter speed or a certain frame rate you're going to meet a very dreadful artifact and that is the flicker yeah i'm trying to get a composition now and uh, what i have here in front of me is this 
Swiss tech formation. And uh, as you can see, I have a 10 stop anti grad, a polarizer, and a two stop uh, anti grad as well. So I'm doing a one minute exposure, and the water is just trying to swipe me out. Similar happens with the, the tripod. I hope that uh, I get a I hope that I get a stable shot and let's just turn on this the timer and here we go I'm at f5 it doesn't really matter because everything is far away I'm at 50 millimeters more or less and uh, we just aim for one minute anyway we'll see what we get I didn't get it it moved we try again it didn't work it was something a big wave come and crash it <laughs> that's the beauty of landscape photography but now i have that standard boat in the background so i either have to photoshop it out or i just have to deal with it or just wait for it to go away anyway you see the tide is coming the water is coming closer and closer and closer i hope we can get some refuge out of this island otherwise we'll, we'll be stuck here forever this is absolutely bang on so I'm happy with that we move on and uh, this is the first photograph literally printed on a Fuji Fuji quality dry photo uh, matte paper looks like now unfortunately there are some hints of magenta that I noticed in this photograph but obviously this has everything to do with the uh, printing process normally this won't be happening but this is a six by six inch with a square format and i was just rem uh, thinking like how large is this a medium format sensor compared to uh, a digital full frame sensor now obviously this is a six by six sen digital sensor do not exist i don't think so but if you shoot medium format with a film camera like Hasselblad i think they offer six by five and Bronica offers 6x6 or 6x5 as well. Anyway, it's, it's huge, huge compared to a full frame. But other than that, beautiful photograph. I'm happy how it turns out. And uh, we move on to the next one. Yes, my friends. It's almost end of the January. I'm breathless because I have to climb this hole, these stairs. There is a person swimming in the water, in the Irish Sea. Great, great performance. Not for me though. <sighs> See you hopefully at the top. I'm finally at the top, like nothing happened. <laughs> and I uh, guess we have to move on because there are other beautiful areas that we want to photograph. Oh. That was a tough climb, but the photo worth it, yeah. The flicker phenomenon is a nuisance. Looks like somebody is blinking very, very fast. It's an artifact that is very hard to correct. Uh, in post-production, you need special software for that, expensive. But it can be very easily avoided when you are recording the video. If you are using 25 or 54 PAL, 24, 30 or 64 NTNC. Now, you may do the switcheroo and use pole frequencies in an TSC area very rarely or vice versa but then you need to find a shutter speed that divides into 50 for PAL area so if you shoot in 30 frames per second you need obviously 1 over 50 of a second now that looks ideal but because 30 also divides into the 60 hertz frame rate of your display but if you go up and up in frame rate once you reach 120 there will be no shutter speed that can match the electrical grid so you're going to avoid flicker that's not nice before we move on with the explanation i just want to tell you that I found another composition that in fairness I shot a couple of times yeah we need an anti grad as well yeah so it, I'm on f10 I'll just probably put f8 or f9 focus somewhere on infinity 
yeah it doesn't really need oh my god it's so difficult sometimes you know that's it focus on infinity and now and now before we proceed with further explanation again we'll be doing a long exposure so what i have here in front of you is the house lighthouse and uh, i have obviously these leading lines goes into it square format rule of thirds i can probably move a little bit to the maybe like this yeah to have the lighthouse deadly in the middle and i'm just doing you see like a half and half composition i don't know if it works maybe i'll try another let me actually see how it works if i'm going to get more of the yeah more like this maybe fill the frame with the subject yes that's much better is it in bulb mode it is bulb mode and we go ahead one minute exposure so should be around 10 15. now in fairness i always try to avoid sitting on the path while taking pictures but sometimes it's unavoidable because my art matters much i think it's a great shot I, I did that before many times probably this is the best angle there are other angles as well uh, if you really want to to search for it but because it's a narrow pathway the light is not at its best but for long exposure black and white gritty nitty it works just 15 more seconds and we're good to go wow i have the leading lines of the the clouds are moving in such a way that they are like forming leading lines towards the uh towards the lighthouse as well probably i need a little bit of dodging and burning to leave the shadows because uh, it's the, the light doesn't fall on the lighthouse but other than that i'm quite happy with this composition and uh, we move on now and here's the photograph in all its glory again printed on the same fuji with the same magenta tint looks nice uh, what strikes me is that it's, it's not that sharp as i am seeing it on on my uh, computer screen it's probably has to do something with the um, printing process as well i did not apply any sharpness in uh, lightroom whatsoever so this translates it's it's a, it's an amazing experience you know you can magnify 100 uh, percent with a digital zoom but zoom but when you have a photograph in your hands and you look at it with a magnifying glass it's a completely completely different feeling and i'm happy with that this will look will do a very nice uh, postal card and uh, we'll take it from there social media happened somewhere in 2000 2005 when youtube uh, emerged uh, as a standalone platform and uh, the way you consume the social media is on a computer display now computer displays are they have a 60 hertz refresh rate compared to televisions in uh, europe because you're supposed to watch them for much longer periods of time you have you have to be much closer to them uh, when you are operating a computer so a higher refresh rate is overall better for your health but uh, that's all nice and fine with that the only thing is that how is this going to translate for us pal area people that are shooting in 25 and uh, 50 frames per second because this doesn't divide equally so there is a concept called the pull down concept and that means certain frames will be duplicated or played three times in order to fill the gaps so for example if you record in 24 frames per second 12 frames will be played twice and 12 three times but if you record in 25 10 frames will be played twice uh, actually three times and 15 frames twice uh, which as you can see it looks more like a tango <laughs> it's quite uneven all around so the judder will be much more prominent now if you shoot in 30 frames per second that probably you know fits very nicely in 60 so is this by any chance the ideal frame rate then for social media what about 24p or any other or 30p how does translate in palaria 24 especially where 24p basically 
it's the frame rate of cinema that we are all used to it. It can uh, be speed up to five, four percent to be brought to be shown in uh, PAL areas. You have a three to two pull down if you want to show it on an American TV. And um, apart from that, can be also natively used in PAL areas because you just set your shutter speed to one over fifty, so that will work as well. But the downsides of using NTSC frequencies in PAL area is that obviously files will be larger. You always have to take into consideration the shutter speed. You may not be able to shoot without an ND filter because you have to control the shutter speed. Usually in low light you cannot go, if you shoot in 30 frames per second, you won't be able to shoot at 1 over 25, which essentially will give you one extra stop of light. You have to remain at 1 over 50. And as I said before, if you shoot at a slow motion in artificial light, you cannot use 120 because no shutter speed will work. So as you can see, uh, there is no definitive answer. Uh, and especially when you are shooting for social media, people expect here on this platform a certain frame rate in their mind. Storytelling that will be 24, 25. Documentaries, uh, reality shows maybe 30 and sports 60. And because social media works on, works on likes and um, shares and video goes viral, so obviously you have to take this into consideration, uh, all those aspects uh, to make it work. But luckily, uh, there is an answer to that, and um, that is the new technology called G-Sync and uh, variable refresh rate. Oh yeah, but look at the view first. Look at the view. This is similar to what I showed before, but this time we have even much more pronounced leading lines to that uh, similar uh, lighthouse. Yeah, beautiful. It's time to, to test my new 10-stop ND filter, which is from KF. As I said, I bought this filter because I like to shoot in rain and fog and everything. So let's just see how it works. It's just a 10-stop. Now it does not have apparently the same blue cast as Lee. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's better. Lee is an excellent company. But uh, hey, you have to adapt to your situation. So one minute exposure. I have a beautiful composition, square format. Just to remember to put the camera in bulb mode. I'm at F13, ISO 80, and uh, we go ahead. We go ahead and take this shot. It's just very simplistic. Uh, I put the lighthouse uh, in the upper corner of the photo, so it will give more energy. Uh, it will also take good advantage of negative space, and then you have the leading lines of this shore, and uh, that leads uh, to the eye to the lighthouse itself. Clouds formation, hopefully they move directly into the lighthouse, which will give us a very nice uh, leading lines as well. Um, the sea is not that uh, stormy today, so it should smooth out nicely. You don't necessarily need to smooth out, this is just a, a preference of mine. And I'm very small in the frame, hello, can you see me? <laughs> and it's done. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, it didn't work as planned. It blown out. Uh, I'll just I'll just going to to switch back to 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 Lee filters because it's it's unfortunately it's, the dynamic range is too high. And as we are speaking, this is the photograph from. Uh, uh, a different, slightly different point of view, as we have discussed. Again, I'm pretty much happy with it. Same glorious magenta tint into the shadows. <laughs> it's okay. It's it's just a first attempt. It, it costs like 80 cents to print such photographs, so it's not a big deal. But I love it. I love it, and I'll be printing more. Ah, look at that, guys. Where am I now? I think this is called Opint beach uh, it's an absolute amazing I took some classical compositions I had some uh, I'll actually show you uh, if you follow me now I had this pillar in front of me which is like a like a huge sea stack and obviously I waited for the water to recede so I can get a long exposure about 0 0.8 to 1 second and then further I went and I shoot that big boulder in front of, uh, of the beach 
uh, again the waves swirling around it and at the background I had basically the uh, Bailey's lighthouse overall I'm happy with this it's nice problem is as you can see my <laughs> my shoes are completely soaked I, I did not have my wellingtons because it's not possible to hike with them and I just have to wait possibly probably to to dry like this it's not comfortable but it is what it is I have I think two more locations and uh, we'll wrap it up and here's the photograph this is I like how the water swirls around this this photo in the foreground and the eyes are taking you to the uh, to the lighthouse that is there in the background somewhere in the middle of the photograph nothing is clipped nothing is crushed it's absolutely great I think I nailed the exposure and it translated very well into the printing process as well very happy with the result and this is the uh, exposure as we are talking about uh, slightly similar variant uh, I like how uh, the how you see the uh, waves splashing there in the middle of the photograph and again we have these leading lines here in the foreground and I think it makes for a good a good example huh is that beautiful <laughs> now coming back to our topic uh, g-sync monitors and free syncs are not nothing new but this technology works best with video games and especially for browsers is not yet implemented but variable refresh rate uh, it is implemented in uh, in mobile phone technology so a lot of people are actually consuming social media on mobile phones and it's possible that your uh, phone will actually adapt its refresh to the content displayed now obviously if newer phones that have 120 one uh, hertz 24 and 30 will play natively and 60 as well is defined but for 25 frames per second I have to say for my phone for example S23 uh, bizarrely enough the refresh rate goes to 60 or to 120 when I'm playing 25p uh, so it's kind of bizarre but if I'm using uh, DaVinci to edit my videos G-Syncs kick in and the refresh rate is somewhere between 75 or 100 uh, it's quite bizarre but I still think that uh, in the future this uh, will work as intended now another thing that I want to tackle is the fact that a lot of people are actually consuming social media at higher play speed rates like 1.52 times because we are bombarded with so many videos each day and unfortunately no, no matter what frame rate they're going to use and no matter if you have or not variable refresh rate that faster play speed will may desynchronize everything somehow wow look at that gorgeous so you see in, in the end I think that if you're in PAL area 25 remains easiest choice because you avoid flicker uh, you can use in artificial light sh FPS up to 100 uh, without any penalties and people are playing videos of higher speed than uh, usual so uh, that being said obviously there is no need to to necessarily adjust the frame rate to something else like NTSC frequency it's just a hassle Huh. brutal condition as well I have to, to I'm in front of this composition now where uh, I have this telegraph pole which is iconic for uh, Ireland somehow and in the in the background we have the pullback towers so I try to make some sort of a diagonal fashion minimalistic exposure I'm at F15, F14 ISO 80 10 stop and grad and a polarizing and uh, one minute exposure uh, the clouds are not moving too much and uh, I'm just at the edge of this cliff I have to be <laughs> very careful when I'm reversing other than that uh, obviously light is flat but it, it works it works for, for black and white photography it's more about the message than the colors and this is the photograph literally 
we have the telegraph sign uh, somewhere in the rule of thirds. We have the sky, not quite in the middle, just a little bit above. And we have the pullback towers there in the foreground that unites with the telegraph fall in a very energetic diagonal line. Uh, there are some waves here in the foreground, which may represent a little bit of a distraction, but overall I, I kind of like it. I, I like the result of it. And uh, yeah, happy. And this is the last photograph uh, which I did. Uh, I went a little bit further down the road and I have noticed this sea stacks, which I took a long exposure, about two minutes. It was started to rain quite heavily, so I got few attempts until I got bored because the filters were keep on uh, getting a lot of splashes from the waves and from the rain. But other than that, it's just a very classical composition of uh, long exposure at the seaside. Nothing is crushed, nothing is clipped. Uh, I'm happy with the results. See you next time.